Evening, everyone. Let's talk about these statements that Francis has made recently about him thinking his papacy may be a short one. Now, for some unknown, unexplainable reason, um, he thinks his pontificate is going to be short, and he would also consider resigning if he can believe this, just like Benedict did. Now, he says, yeah, I don't mind being Pope, but I'd like to be able to go out in Rome and nobody recognize me for a pizza, you know, a.k.a. lose my celebrity status and just blend in and be a nobody and just do something without being bugged. I have the feeling my pontificate will be brief, four or five years, even two or three. A couple has already passed. A strange sensation. I feel the Lord has placed me here for a short time. <clears throat> In general, he thinks that Benedict was courageous to open the door to the Pope's emeritus. But he doesn't like the idea of an automatic retirement age at age 80. Well, if he would consider resigning, or if he thinks he's going to only be there four or five years, maybe two or three, well, isn't that kind of double speaking? You're a pope, man. You're supposed to stay in there until you die. That's part of the job requisite. You know? It's just the way it's supposed to be. There was a different article also with basically the same thing. So what is going on here, I believe, is this. Malachi's prophecy. Now, it's a Catholic prophecy, and... They say that there's a lot of the Catholics that don't believe it, the higher-ups. But isn't that interesting that this Pope, Peter the Roman, Petrus Romanus, nobody listed in Malachi's prophecy after him, has made this statement that I don't think I'm going to be around very long. Now, there was another interview that I read that he said whatever happens when the Lord takes him, he, he hopes he, at least it doesn't hurt. Whatever you can get out of that. <clears throat> now, this is disturbing to me. Later that day at, at Mass, this man, this Pope of this gigantic organization, the Vatican, papacy, announces a special jubilee year, which begins on December the 8th. Only the 27th time in the history of the Catholic Church that there's been a holy year. Well, 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 isn't that just great? 27 times in the history of this organization that there's been a holy year. Well, I got news for you. You don't make the holy years and you don't take, you know, you don't take it away from the Lord. God himself set when the jubilees occur. This Catholic church does not God, the Most High, the I Am that I Am. He sets when there's a jubilee. And there ain't no break in the action. They occur every so often, like clockwork. Shemitahs, and then jubilees. Shemitahs, jubilees. Read all about it. Bone up on it. Gain some understanding. 
These are times set by our Creator, not by this man-made church. If they want to disregard the times that our Lord has created and made and kept, they're free to do so. They're free to brainwash all their followers and make it seem like they set when there's a special jubilee year. Well, we are in a Shemitah year, folks. And I do believe we're going to see some radical changes at the end of the year financially. Think about it. When a, when a child, when we're, we're all children in the eyes of the Lord, when a child obeys, and does something you like, and you're all happy, you want to celebrate with the child, and reward them in some way, a pat on the back, a, you know, if they're young enough, buy them a toy, they're older, you take them out to dinner or something, you know, you do something to enjoy the time of whatever this celebration is to congratulate them for doing well, doing good. But if they do bad, then they don't get that, do they? They don't get a reward. They get a chastisement and a punishment. The same thing is true with nations. Although everybody that tries to do good Follow the example that Jesus set. Follow the, the teachings of the Bible that are for us to live clean and good lives. We still have to suffer and endure because of what everyone else and our leaders have done wrong and the ways that they have led our whole entire country. Look at it. Think of, think of the Lord. He's looking down, he's seeing the nation. He's seeing what we're doing all over the world. All our little dirty handiwork, country after country after country. Upsetting their leaderships, taking over, putting puppet governments in, killing innocent people. He's seeing all that, knowing that we're either responsible solely or we're playing with somebody else and we got partial responsibility. You look in here, he's seeing all these little babies that we're aborting every year. He's seeing all the prostitution. He's seeing all the pornography. He's seeing all the gang violence and all the drug sales and all the drug usage. He's seeing all these states turn away from his teachings intentionally in the name of so-called rights and allowing same-sex marriages, which he cannot stand. It is an abomination and detestable to him. But they disregard that. It doesn't fit their belief. It doesn't fit their lifestyle way. So do you believe, as a nation, as a whole, that he's looking down here and he's pleased with, with our nation? That he would reward our nation for what's going on? You can't say that he would. So you know he's going to have to chastise and punish. And that's how Shemitah is run. It doesn't have to be that way, but it can be that way. And I believe it's going to be that way. So you should prepare yourself and not be shocked when things start hitting the crapper and going down really hardcore like seven years ago. Because I believe what's coming is going to be worse than seven years ago. The well off, they're still going to be okay because they're well off. But the middle class and below the middle class are going to, are going to be really hurting severely. And it doesn't have to be this way. The things that our nation as a whole and the leaders politically and these groups with agendas keep doing is turning away from the teachings of our Lord. And on a different note, you've heard this guy make in the Vatican make crazy statements like, 
Uh, if we did ever have alien contact, you know, off-world contact, that we would be happy to baptize them. What? Well, that would... I thought they weren't around when Adam and Eve committed original sin. So they wouldn't be guilty of any original sin, supposedly, would they? And I thought that baptism was not only to be baptized in the name of Christ and receive the Holy Spirit and repent of your sins and live cleanly and wash yourself from the original sin. So why would a so-called, a.k.a. alien, need to be forgiven of original sin? It doesn't make sense to me. But these are the crazy things that you'll hear them saying. And I still think the statements that he made play right into this. I do believe it. Because he had no reason to say these things. No reason at all. Unless he knows something. Unless he knew something when he took over the papacy or he found something out after he took over the papacy. But he put it out there in the press so the people would hear it, so the people would read it for some reason. <clears throat> now what kind of papacy will you have? If he's the last one, well, it would obviously be if Malachi, if this prophecy is, is really dead on, it would obviously be a different form of papacy, or maybe something that wasn't even called the papacy anymore. And I'm leaning towards thinking. It would be a different type of papacy, not like what it is now. So whatever, whatever the way a pope is thought of now will end. And whoever follows this guy, the mold of the old way that these popes were thought of will be thrown away. And this new type of leader that takes over may not be called a pope, but will still be the leader of this faith. So it's something you should think about, is what are these people saying actually when they make these kind of statements pay some attention to what words roll off of their lips give it some thought as to what are they actually meaning because they're designating a time frame four or five years or maybe two or three well two or three would give you one more You see where this goes? Pray for the world and pray for its people. All nations and all people are in distress. Jesus loves sinners just as much as non-sinners, and he wants to save sinner souls too. Everybody sins, just somebody sins a lot more than the next guy. Non-believers caught up in different face, they can change. You should pray that they do, because he doesn't want to leave anybody out of his kingdom. He wants all souls. He made us all, and he wants everybody to know him. I'm going to bring you some more in just a little bit. God bless.